Hello everyone, welcome back to GG, and this is part two for this news report today. It's Tuesday, October 30th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description, all of them, so check them out. I'll probably uh, have to cover all this in four videos today, so you can check out the website or the YouTube channel to be able to find part one, part two, part three, and all that. So the big bad hurricane's over. I think 36 souls have been lost, and uh, there's been significant damage done to some of the infrastructure. Um, but a lot of fear mongering, a lot of fear mongering around this quote Frankenstorm and stuff like that. Um, you know, especially even in the conspiracy world. Um, you know, as far as uh, riots and, and national guard and all that stuff. And then I saw on the comment boards about how um, people were saying, you know, why is everyone making this all political, all political? And I looked in the comment board and there wasn't really one comment about, you know, bash, you know, if, if Romney was in office, you know, he could stop the hurricanes or some crap, you know, whatever, you know. And it's like uh, there was not one comment on it. Um, and I noticed that they actually were making it into a political thing with all these, um, you know, mainstream uh, media, uh, basically, you know, it's all about getting people in fear and dividing them. And, uh, and so I didn't even actually see any comments about politics. It was just headlines from mainstream articles injecting it. So, but th that's, that's people receiving the propaganda properly. It's properly imprinting and downloading into them. So they're making an issue out of a non-issue basically. So, uh, it, it's almost as funny as people who write comments, like they have some kind of say as if it's a democracy and they just take the, the winning side always, right? Like they want to vote for a president. It's going to be a winner because it makes them, uh, they live vicariously through these, um, through these kind of like uh, Hollywood stars, right? That they have emotionally, uh, they get emotionally charged with. So they feel like they're winners. But one of the things is Sandy likely to cost more than Hurricane Irene. So damage estimated at suggested $20 billion. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, pretty bad, right? It's going to it's gonna be bad. Then it says a big storm requires big government. So Americans never heard of the National Response Coordination Center. But if they're lucky, uh, it exists on the days of lethal winds and flood ties. So it's part of FEMA. And... Uh, yeah, basically it goes on there and says that uh, big government's going to be great and stuff like that for big storms. And cuz they do love it, right? Uh, they don't want people like in Australia where they, you know, where they had that bad flooding where they're helping each other. They don't like when people help each other, right? They don't want them to be armed and defend their properties. No, they want the police and the authorities to do it. But the reality is is that they don't do it successfully. Your your place will get looted after you get evacuated. Panic buying grips the East Coast. Mad rush for supplies ahead of mega storm. So this is part of the um, alternative media um, talking about how everybody's got to stock up and everything, right? Uh, survivalism. The economic impact of Hurricane Sandy. Not all bad news. So see, this is what it's all big business. So yeah, it goes on the devastating impact of life and property. It goes on and says, but with the substantial resources to overcome adversity, it's far more complex than merely adding up insurance payments and uninsured losses. So the upside is it can give alien construction sector a boost and unleash smart reinvestment. It actually improves stricken areas. So see, it's going to be good. Yeah. So ultimately, Americans, as they always seem to do, will emerge stronger in the wake of disaster with more debt carried on their shoulders to work off. See, that's the scam. That's that's the rub, like I said before. It's awesome. It's an awesome scam. Insurance companies and all this and weather modification Authorities uh, start, they did it with the farmers just this past summer with the drought, you know. They did it with them too. It's a big scam. Authorities start anti-looting campaign in the aftermath of Sandy. So I don't know if one, they actually found someone actually doing it, but they said, uh, you know, they're arresting him for suspicion of looting. This one guy was actually um, found under a collapsed building. And after uh, being rescued, however, the suspect was ushered away by police who suspected him of attempting to loot the site. So one of the things I noticed that was that, uh, of course, National Guard was uh, posted and ready, and I think they were deployed. Uh, also, you had the border, the ICE, whatever, immigration authorities, they were actually told to step down during this. Um, you had the NASDAQ that was also shut down. Ex-FEMA director Michael Brown criticizes Obama for reacting too quickly to storm. I don't know why he did this, but he, he said here, 
that he criticized Obama for responding to Hurricane too early. One thing Obama going to be asked is why did he jump on the hurricane so quickly and go back to D.C. so quickly, like in Benghazi when he went to Las Vegas? Why was that so quick? I don't give a flip, I don't give a flip, because he doesn't care, right? Obama's problem, he doesn't seem to care. So, But see, he's just still going to vote for him, right? Just like, um, uh, who was it, uh, John Cusack who was bashing him? saying he was an elitist, be, so he's still going to vote for him. That's what's so pathetic and sad about this. And he thought he was going to be like an RF, RFK, the Kennedy, who was concerned about Vietnam and poverty. But he says Obama seems not to care about anything but his own political survival. I remember what that said about that debate with his eyes bugging out. I think that's true. But that's why he reacted. They, they're always going to react like this. So not really to help you, but to impose their authority over you. Let them let you know, remind you that uh, that they have authority over you. So while almost everyone else is in the dark, the lights are still shining at Goldman Sachs. The lights were off at the Freedom Tower or Slavery Tower in Lower Manhattan, but Goldman Sachs still managed to keep their lights on as of an hour ago. So, and just think, when the economy starts to get really bad, they'll be having helicopters, black helicopters flying with uh, special tactical teams uh, rescuing these bastards. All right, where in Iran they actually hang them. So here, Letterman Fallon show goes on, so minus audiences. So uh, the entertainment, uh, the circus show, still goes on. It says nowhere to run. Homeless offered little aid in wake of Hurricane Sandy. So it's like uh, maybe we can harness them. Maybe we can turn them into boats or something like that, right? String them all together and and, and uh, create out, create a rescue mission. So the government was there for them. Uh, actually, no, they weren't. The homeless were left with few options except to hope for the best. But it is crazy because they're really they're really pushing the media coverage of this. There's still live coverage everywhere. I'm finding. Uh, remember what I told uh, told you guys yesterday when I was doing my videos. I noticed that there was a lot of uh, servers going down, a lot of problems with uh, with pages and stuff like that. Access to web pages. So I don't know if that was directly a result of that or you know indirect result. But either way, it was what it was. They thought it was going to be a lot worse than what it was. It was a couple hours of rain and uh, some wind, and that was it. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving here. I'm going to have to try to speed it up a little bit. Occupy got it right, so says the banker. So, yeah, it goes on and says that this is not a joke. A banker actually said this. So, it says uh, the voice was right in a moral sense. The Occupy voice was right in a moral sense, and it's pointing out of a deep and rising inequality in the banking and financial system. This was a senior official at the Bank of England that was praising the Occupy movement uh, with a loud and pervasive voice. Well... They're being used. It's like I said before, um, there's always uh, people that are being exploited. And this is definitely it. Occupy Wall Street demand introduction of Robin Hood tax. Yeah, this is from October of a year ago. And just recently, so this is the thing. They want they, they like them because they're, they're anti-capitalism or whatever. And uh, they want to push a Robin Hood tax. Well, where does this really come from? Well, it comes from the Vatican. The Vatican, who's actually calling for a central world bank. So the Pope endorses Robin Hood tax. Actually, in the EU, European Union, they just finally cleared what they called the final hurdle to pass this Robin Hood tax, which is going to go into a nice slush fund for the globalists, like the carbon tax. And a big shocker, international investors prefer Syria to Greece. So the world's markets may believe that the worst of the financial uh, consolidation of the world's wealth in Europe and the world is over after three turbulent years, but those people who control the purse strings of the world's businesses are not breathing any easier. And a survey of finance directors from a global business consultancy finds that, uh, what? That Greece is considered a riskier place to invest and set up business than in war-torn Syria. Then in Greece again, you guys saw this probably, Greece rich list whistleblower has been arrested. The Greek journalist who published the names of more than 2,059 wealthy Greeks with Funds hidden in Swiss bank accounts have been arrested on charges of releasing private data. So that's not really a big surprise. Former Italian Prime Minister Berlusconi gets four years for tax evasion. This is how they all roll. Um, and uh, he actually said that he's still going to be running, so he's still up there. He's not going away. New York Times blocked by China after a report on wealth of, um, I can't pronounce his name, but, uh, you know, basically a rich Chinese uh, family that runs the show there. So they have accumulated billions during his leadership. And of course, like I said, they have their own organic farms like in, and uh, organic food like in England and that, and probably Russia too. 
And I love these stories, right, about security, because, you know, this government is always about uh, cybersecurity and security, security. Everything's in the name of security. And yet this always happens, right? Hackers steal 3.6 million Social Security numbers, right? Or uh, like the veterans' information that was leaked or the veterans that got HIV <laughs> from going to the VA. So, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, 3.6 million Social Security numbers and 387,000 credit and debit card numbers were recently stolen by hackers. So. So, I mean, those numbers, we know that Social Security is what? It's uh, it's the debt that you pay off uh, to the Federal Reserve for the bankruptcy that was uh, basically declared, what, back in 1933? And it's kind of funny when you see articles about how the storm and stuff like that's going to help the economy. Well, <laughs> you're going to have people that aren't born yet. They're going to be born like 2060 paying off uh, all of those contracts for that infrastructure that was destroyed and then you got people that are alive now paying for stuff back in the 70s so yeah it's kind of like the people that just you know they uh, a nun like a nun and something like that a eight-year-old dude got past uh security to a high uh nuclear facility or something like that either were storing the fuel or something but it was in uh kentucky or tennessee tennessee i believe and they just walk you know they got right in there and stuff like that there's historical treasures missing from National Archives, precious artifacts like the Wright Brothers airplane patent, the bombing maps for nuclear attack on Japan, an original eyewitness report to the Hindenburg disaster photos and taken by the astronauts on the moon are just some of the items stolen from the National Archives. But it's all about security, right? That's why you got to get groped at the airport. The Germans are coming for their gold. So it says uh, German federal court said that this country's central bank should conduct annual audits and physically inspect its gold reserves worldwide. So... For decades, the Bundesbank has relied on writing or written confirmation of its gold holdings in London, Paris, and New York. According to the report, the last time the officials physically inspected the central bank's gold holdings was, well, never. So maybe they're starting to learn from other things like that, right? Where it's just, oops, it's gone, and it's gone. So they're not happy with taking the word of other central banks about its existence. So it put out the word that it disagrees with the audit court, and it goes on and it says that, Nonetheless, it is actually going to file the recommendation that it verify the gold stocks. It has a plan to ship some 150 tons of gold back to Germany for more thorough examination. So that's why in Zero Hedge asked the question, why did the Bundesbank secretly withdraw two-thirds of its London gold? They want to make sure it's there. World's richest man doubles down on gold from October 12th. So the world's richest man valued at $69 billion, just put $750 million into several gold mining projects in Mexico. Then next up, we have this Russian ship with 700 tons of gold ore goes missing. So nine-person crews sent distress call. Remember when I talked about Putin is uh, uh, basically stockpiling gold. So, um, you know, was this something like uh, uh, Die Hard or did it, someone really steal it? It says here, uh, sabotage it. MP Sir Peter raises a specter of abolishment of the euro. So Luth MP has suggested to the Prime Minister that the euro be abolished in favor of a return to national currencies, saying a possible fiscal union would be dominated by Germany, leading to a death of democracy throughout most of Europe. But of course, David Cameron said what uh, the, the, the insecurity of the eurozone was a result of lack of a fiscal union, but also lack of a banking union. So that was the whole point. That's what I was saying. It was to what? It was to prop up the petrodollar, which was having some trouble, so they bring the euro down a little bit, and then uh, they consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. That's what they're always doing in increased regulations and in banking institutions. Panama wants the euro as legal tender. Get that. One of the fastest growing economies in Latin America wants to adopt the euro as legal tender to run alongside the country's U.S. dollar economy. Now, remember the last person that tried to do that was Iraq. In Iraq, November 2000, Iraq stopped accepting U.S. dollars for their oil, Hussein switched the currency required to purchase Iraq oil to the euros. So, yeah, it says selling oil through the UN Oil for Food program. Iraq converted all of its U.S. dollars into the UN account to the euro. And I think we all remember the history of that, which is they were attacked. Kind of like when Gaddafi wanted to introduce a gold uh, diner or diner currency for Africa. An Africa currency backed by gold. And then he was invaded. You have what? Shell seeking Iran sanctions work around via cargo grain barter. So they want to do the food for oil program type thing, right? So, yeah. It says they're going to work around these international sanctions by repaying 1.4 billion oil debt to Iran with grain barter deal with the agribusiness giant 
Cargill, so I guess a nice GMO, right? Of course, we know the UN Oil for Food uh, program was a fraud, and everybody knew that. So join me in part three, and we'll finish up with the economy, and then we'll go into eugenics and into the police state. This is Gigi, and I'm Darko. Thank you.